Okay, uh, thank you for a nice uh, introduction. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, I got this amazing opportunity to tell something about our research. Uh, my name is Louis Stepanek, and I come from the first faculty of medicine, uh, Charles Susan in Prague, and from uh, uh, faculty of biomedical engineering, uh, Czech Technical University in Prague. Uh, Prague is the capital of the Czech Republic, it's in the central Europe, maybe. So, uh, me and our team is just interested uh, in, uh, in uh, let's say, evolution of facial attractiveness for purposes of plastic surgery. And uh, this is a joint work with Pavel Kassel and, uh, and Jan Mieszczak. So let's have a look at the internet outline of, uh, of uh, this talk. Uh, I'll start with a quick introduction when I'm going to, uh, to uh, in, in, uh, quickly introduce some uh, basic terms. Then I will follow with uh, develop methodology. After that, I will continue with some results we have got. And uh, finally, uh, I will point out some key findings uh, and maybe make uh, some repetitions of uh, uh, important pieces of uh, knowledge. Okay, uh, despite it's spoken that uh, uh, human facial diagnosis is uh, in the eye of, uh, of the observer, uh, plenty of current studies come to a conclusion that this is not true at all because uh, human facial attractiveness uh, is uh, data-driven, is data-based, and uh, it's not too much dependent. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Better? Uh, uh, and it's not too much dependent on uh, preferences. Uh, okay, I'll try to find the, be the best response. Uh, it's not too much dependent on, um, let's say, preferences of a perceiver. Uh, therefore, uh, it is feasible to do some research on exploring which uh, you know, geometrical uh, features of, of a human face uh, affect its attractiveness the most. And uh, in addition, what is more, uh, because of current plexus surgery uh, just deals with uh, aesthetic indications uh, such as an improvement uh, of uh, the uh, attractiveness of the attractiveness level of a smile and other facial emotions, simply uh, the, uh, the attractiveness level of uh, facial emotions uh, does matter. Well, uh, since there are some uh, indications in plastic surgery uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, just deal uh, with, uh, uh, with dynamic aspects, and I mean uh, emotions, facial emotions and smile and so on, uh, uh, the field of plastic surgery should take into consideration the fact that, uh, that uh, the total uh, face impression is also dependent on uh, presently expressed facial uh, emotion at the time. Uh, whereas the real structures like uh, facial muscles are already uh, subjects of uh, surgical procedures, the changes for better in uh, the changes for better in facial emotions should be, in fact, the desired results uh, of uh, these procedures. So. Uh, uh, however, uh, these <laughs> our, uh, uh, relationships between uh, real structures like facial muscles and uh, dynamic aspects like facial emotions are too complex and not so obvious. So uh, we just expect that uh, machine learning classification of facial images into facial emotions should be one of the first steps of the whole process. and. Uh, and uh, just to realize that uh, if we are able to classify uh, classify fa uh, facial images into facial emotions using machine learning. Okay, uh, in this study, uh, we just uh, applied uh, some uh, machine learning methods to, uh, to identify which geometric features of a human face are associated with uh, an increase of facial attractiveness after undergoing rhinoplasty where the rhinoplasty is uh, one of the uh, plastic surgery procedures. It's in fact a correct, cor correct, uh, correction uh, of a uh, nose shape. And uh, what is more, uh, we explored how accurate uh, classification of facial images uh, into facial emotions is, uh, since once again, uh, the plastic surgery should take into, con con uh, to should take into consideration the fact that uh, uh, that the total face impression is uh, also dependent on uh, actual of, of presently expressed facial emotion. So, in case of uh, facial attractiveness evaluation, uh, uh, just some profile facial image data were collected for each of patients before and after uh, the rhinoplasty. The images were uh, then processed. 
uh, it means that they were, main, they were mainly checked for uh, some inappropriate ones uh, that were excluded from the following computations. After that, uh, the images were not marked. It means that some uh, morphometrically important uh, points were plotted on and uh, transformed into coordinates. And finally, some, met some metrics and some uh, angles between the uh, some angles between the landmarks uh, were derived and uh, analyzed using R. Okay, in this case, just a multivariate linear, linear regression, so not a rocket science here, was performed to select uh, some predictors. It means some metrics and some derived angles. Increasing facial attractiveness just after undergoing rhinoplasty. In case of uh, classification of uh, fa uh, facial images into facial emotions, uh, the process is pretty uh, similar to the previous one. Some portrait facial image data were collected for each of the patients. Uh, exposed to an emotional incentive. For example, they were told a joke just to express uh, fun emotion, or at least we hope so. Uh, and <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the images were uh, processed, landmarkized, uh, similar way in, like, like uh, in the previous, uh, previous uh, kind of study. And here, Bayesian uh, NAVE classifier using E1071 uh, package. Uh, maybe you know and you know it. Uh, decision trees uh, maybe are part package uh, and neural networks using uh, back propagation with uh, sigmoidal activating function uh, via neural net uh, R package where learn to allow assigning new face image data into one of the facial emotions. So uh, facial attractiveness was uh, just uh, measured uh, using a seven point Likert scale uh, by a large board of independent observers. Uh, it means that uh, they, uh, they, 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 uh, uh, people in the board just used uh, numbers like minus 3, minus 2, and so on, to uh, 2 plus 3, to assess uh, an attractiveness level of uh, an observed uh, facial image. And the sets of uh, used facial emotions uh, uh, that were used in the studies uh, just, uh, is just based on ekman friesen FACS scale system. The aberration FACS uh, uh, stands for uh, Facial Acting Coding System. Uh, yeah, this system is a bit old, but still good, but was improved in the terms of uh, increasing number of uh, emotions, defined emotions, and in the terms of uh, experimental assigning uh, uh, each of the uh, uh, experimental assigning a quality to each of the emotions, such that uh, each one of emotions. Uh, just uh, uh, is, is just either a negative or a neutral or positive one. Yeah, uh, as I said before, uh, landmarks are morphometrically important points uh, on a plane of a facial image. Uh, they were plotted manually using a developed a Shiny app uh, by which uh, coordinates of each of the landmarks were collected. And uh, after that, uh, each one of uh, original coordinates uh, were uh, standardized in the range 0 to 1, uh, assuming that uh, all faces uh, taken in the pictures should, should be uh, uh, of equal size. Well, uh, when we got uh, the landmarks and, the and their coordinates, some metrics and angles uh, were derived. As we can see, for example, Nasofrontal, uh, nasofrontal angle is uh, an angle between landmarks, uh, uh, between organs of landmarks 2, 3, and 18 in profile picture. So it's an uh, angle here. Naso, uh, label angle is an angle between coordinates of landmarks uh, 7, 6, and 17. It's an uh, angle. This angle should be here. And so on. And using these uh, kinds of derivations, uh, we just got final data set where, where uh, each variable, uh, each variable uh, corresponds to one of the derived metrics or angles, and uh, uh, and uh, the last variable just is just a tar target one, so uh, it uh, includes uh, classes of emotions, and each row uh, consists of uh, is of uh, one image data. Okay. Uh, there's a summary uh, of the multivariate linear regression. Uh, as you can see, uh, a mean increase of uh, facial attractiveness after undergoing rhinoplasty is about 3.8 liquor point. Uh, per each radian uh, of nasofrontal angle enlargement, we could expect a mean increase uh, of, I mean, of uh, about 
uh, 0.35 uh, liquid point in a facial attractiveness after undergoing craniopathy. And similarly, uh, per, each, uh, uh, per each radian of nasal labial angle enlargement, uh, so it's the orange one, uh, we could expect mean increase of um, mean increase about 0.4 liquor point in facial recognition uh, after undergoing rhinoplasty. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, these kinds of results has, uh, uh, has some limitations because, for example, if both the uh, angles uh, would be just straight angles, the nose would simply disappear in, ca in, in that case. So there are relatively narrow uh, ranges of feasible values. Uh, uh, for for these angles. Well, uh, these entries can just uh, show to us which predictor, so it means uh, which uh, derived metric or which derived uh, angle uh, between the landmarks uh, can uh, can affect uh, the classification of facial images into uh, facial emotions the most. And as we can see, uh, angular height uh, uh, is is the predictor which influences the cause of the most. And angular height is just a, uh, just a distance between a mouth angular to a horizontal, horizontal line between the lips. So if the angular height is uh, large enough, it is larger than the constant here, then uh, it means that a smile on the image just, uh, the, the fi face, uh, sorry, face on the image just smiling, yeah. The angular height is just uh, large enough. Uh, then, in that case, uh, emotion of such a, such a face uh, uh, in the image is classified as a fun emotion, and it's pretty meaningful. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, in descending order, geometry of eyebrow, uh, mouth, and uh, eyes uh, affect, affect in this order uh, the classification into, uh, into emotions. And in the, uh, in the uh, lower uh, plot, you can just see that uh, it's it's uh, it's a case of a classification of uh, uh, facial images into uh, in, into uh, facial qualities of emotions, just positive, neutral, or a negative one. And we can see that angular height uh, uh, also uh, again plays the main role in this kind of classification. And uh, it's meaningful again because if uh, the angular height is uh, large enough, larger than the constant here. Uh, then face is smiling and the emotion is classified as a positive and it's, uh, it's uh, just according to our expectation. Yeah. Okay, uh, as I said before, uh, naive bias, uh, na na bias classifier, uh, decision trees and uh, neural networks using back propagation and uh, uh, model activating function. Uh, we are learned uh, just to allow signing new face image data into, uh, into one of the facial emotions or one of the uh, facial emotional qualities. And uh, confusion matrices uh, are displayed here uh, in, that, in that order. And uh, in overall, uh, predictive accuracy for the bias classifier is about, uh, let's say, 65% for the decision is about 70% uh, and for the neural networks it's about, it's more than 75%. Well, uh, if I made, uh, if I have make some uh, conclusion, as we have seen, uh, enlargement of both nasal label and nasal frontal angle uh, were determined as statistically significant uh, predictors, increasing the level of facial organism just after undergoing craniopathy. Neural networks uh, manifested the highest predictive accuracy uh, uh, in case of uh, classification of facial images into facial. Uh, emotions and finally uh, geometry of mouth, eyebrows and uh, eyes in the descending order uh, affect uh, classification of facial images into, fa into facial emotions or facial emotional qualities. Okay, thank you for attention and enjoy your lunch.
thank you for the question. I think it's a, it's a different kind of study, yeah, in fact, but according to my uh, personal experience, uh, so the question was uh, the, uh, uh, just to uh, conserve the uh, similarity to the previous phase or to make it the most different as, as possible. To conserve, yeah. Uh, I think that as we, uh, yeah, it's maybe kind of uh, based on, uh, let's say, it should be maybe based on this kind of uh, decision trees. And as we can see, angular heights and uh, uh, in general geometry of mouth is uh, maybe the, m m the m most significant player just in uh, classification of, of emotion, yeah. But uh, I don't know if, uh, I, I think that uh, in case of just uh, uh, conservating of similarity between uh, uh, just uh, shape of uh, face bit uh, before and after some uh, surgery. I think that the bone, bones and maybe the uh, hard parts of uh, face should be the uh, should be the ones that just uh, yeah they just uh, let's say hold the hold the uh, similarity to the previous yeah just just uh, just the shape of uh, face before the before the procedure. But uh, it's only my opinion, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, you mean the image, or original of the image? Uh, well, it's our own images, it's our own data, and uh, I think that uh, it's not too, too easy to share it, for example, somewhere online. Yeah, maybe maybe some uh, yeah some transferred uh, data from the original images, uh, but uh, for example in Europe uh, there is something like a GDPR maybe you know and it's kind of law that is very strictly, and uh, it's make uh, even more harder to to share some medical medical kind of informations. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know because I, I'm. For this moment, uh, I am not planning to share it, but uh, maybe the codes, yeah, I, I can publish the codes, and I can publish the code of the Shiny app, yeah, but uh, really, really data, is, uh, I think the data are just a property of the patients, in fact, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.